Hello everyone, welcome to Mind Brain Talks, the place where you find diverse and scientifically accurate information regarding psychology, neuropsychology, neurosciences and research methods every single week. My name is Bruno Faustino, I am a licensed clinical psychologist and neuropsychologist who's been working as a therapist, researcher and educator for the past few years. Here I discuss and describe lots of topics, themes and concepts from psychology and neurosciences for you to understand and for you to learn something about it. All contents here are just for educational purposes and it's not intended to diagnose any psychiatric condition or neurological disorder. So, without further delay, let's jump for today's content. So, today I will show to you how to perform a Pearson correlation in SPSS. As you know, uh, Pearson correlations are a very used um, statistical analysis, statistical method or statistical test to uh, explore associations between variables in psychology. Therefore, I think that will be very useful to you to see how you can do it in a simpler way in SPSS. I've used these four manuals to prepare myself to do uh, this video and I think that these manuals are very useful uh, to study uh, statistics, uh, applied statistics to um, psychology, biostatistics and to understand how to perform statistical tests in SPSS. So if you want to check these books, please see the video description below. Before we jump to a SPSS environment, I will give you some uh, general um, notions about correlations to help you build meaning about uh, what is a correlation. So, a correlation is a statistical test that measures the degree of a linear association between two variables. Typically, uh, a correlation coefficient is expressed in R when we talk about Pearson correlations or S when we talk about Spearman correlations. Typically, it lies between uh, less 1 and plus 1. Okay? Uh, forward, we will see how this can help us to understand uh, the degree of association of two variables. And typically, when we talk about a correlation, we talk about a Pearson, a Spearman, a Candle or a serial correlation. Uh, one thing that is very important is that correlation do not imply causation because uh, if two variables are associated, uh, does not mean that one variable is the cause of the other. So it's very important that you keep this, uh, this notion in mind when you perform statistical tests, when you perform correlational analysis in your data and in your study. So, correlations typically fall between less 1 and plus 1 and uh, correlations that are uh, between 0.1 and 0.3 are described as small correlations or weak correlations. When correlations fall between uh, 0.3 and 0.5, uh, typically they are described as medium or moderate correlation. And finally, when uh, correlations are uh, higher than 0.5, typically we call this a large or strong correlation. Correlations are based on the, uh, parametric assumptions, uh, which are very important to establish which kind of uh, statistical tests that uh, we must perform. However, I will talk uh, about this in the future. Here I will talk about just uh, some uh, assumptions that uh, we need to have in mind to perform uh, a statistical analysis, uh, to perform, in this case, um, a correlational analysis. So, uh, the two variables must be uh, continuous. Uh, uh, all variables must have cases and variable and values in both variables, okay? So, uh, um, it is assumption there must be a linear correlation between variables. Uh, we expect that uh, these cases must be independent, okay? There, uh, we hope that the variables are not associated uh, by any other means. Uh, both variables uh, must have a normal distribution 
and the, the variables must be collected from a random sample from population and uh, we expect that are not any outliers in both variables. So now I'll show to you how to apply this knowledge to an hypothetical research problem or research parroting. Please uh, look to this problem as an hypothetical one, okay? This is not a true problem, this is not true data. Uh, I've made this up just to uh, give you some, um, some illustration about how to apply, how to perform uh, uh, correlational analysis in some uh, random data, okay? Please, this is not um, real uh, data, this is not real persons, okay? So, let's go. Emotion regulation, it's a mental ability that allows humans uh, to regulate and modulate emotions. Difficulties in emotion regulation may have some impacts on mental health and symptomatology. Emotion difficulties are positively correlated with symptomatology. Okay. I think it's fair to uh, infer this operant condition to be tested as an hypothesis. Okay. So, uh, our uh, null hypothesis it's when we have no association between emotional difficulties and symptomatology and um, our um, age one it's when we find some association between uh, these variables or as i said uh, as we find association between uh, emotional difficulties and uh, symptomatology of course what we are expecting here is to reject the new hypothesis which is the rejection of uh, an absence of uh, an effect. So now let's jump to uh, SPSCS. So here we are in the SPSCS environment and uh, I want you to look to uh, this column here, emotion difficulties and symptomatology, okay? Just these two columns here. So, how can we perform a correlational analysis here in this, um, uh, in this problem? We go right here to analyze, then we look to this word here, correlate, and then we select bivariate. Okay, I've selected already the two variables so, so but I will show you how you can perform this you just click in this button here and this arrow points to the right and you okay, just select emotional difficulties and symptomatology then we have the here select the Pearson because we are performing the Pearson correlation okay and we go to here to options we just want the correlation coefficients so we will not um, we will not uh, click here in means and standard deviations neither in cross product deviations okay so we can press continue okay we here we can also uh, standardize and customize some things right here but uh, also we will not perform this today so, it's very simple. I think we can move forward. We have our selected options and now let's go. Okay. So, and you have here this, um, this table here. And what you can see is that emotion difficulties are strongly correlated with symptomatology. Okay can see correlation is significant to 0.01 level, two-tailed, okay? As you can see, here this value shows our, our p-value, which means this p-value is uh, below uh, point, uh, zero, point 0.01, which means that is, uh, our correlation is statistically significant. Therefore, we can imply that emotion difficulties are uh, correlated with symptomatology. Okay, and 
that's just it. It's all for today. Don't forget to see the video's description uh, regarding today's team to see the manuals that I spoke to you in the beginning of this video. And also, if you like to leave a comment or a suggestion, uh, please um, say something in the comment sections below. And also, if you find useful what you saw here, please consider to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. Welcome to Mind Brain Talks, and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye! Hello everyone, welcome to Mind Brain Talks, a place where you find diverse and scientifically accurate information regarding psychology, neuropsychology, neurosciences and research methods every single week. My name is Bruno Faustino, I am a licensed clinical psychologist and neuropsychologist who has been working as a therapist, researcher and educator for the past few years. Here I discuss and describe diverse topics, research findings and data regarding psychology and neurosciences the best as I can for you to understand and for you to learn something about it. All videos here are just for educational purposes and it's not intended for any consideration about a diagnostic criteria or neurological disorder. Without further delay, let's jump for today's content. So, today I will show to you how uh, to do the key square test in SPSCS. This video it will be framed on the tutorial section of the channel. I've used these four manuals to prepare myself to uh, develop this video and uh, I think these uh, four manuals are very good in explaining how we can use statistics and how we can apply statistics to um, every kind of psychological problem and how we can perform these tests in SPSS. So if you like uh, what you're seeing here, please check the video description and uh, you will find there uh, these four manuals. So now let's look to the chi-square test. The chi-square test is a statistical test to measure whether there is an association between variables, uh, but these variables must be related or independent. So another issue uh, with this test is that the variables must be categorical. So, they can't be nominal, uh, they can't be continuous, they must be categorical, okay? And of course, this is a non-parametric test. We do not need normal distribution as uh, an assumption uh, to perform a chi-square test. So, as uh, similar to correlations, we do not provide, uh, this test do not provide any inferences about causation. However, there are some assumptions re regarding key square test. The variables must be categorical. It will be needed two or more levels for each variable. For instance, if we have a sex variable or a gender variable, we may have two, uh, two levels, such as uh, male or female. And um, we, uh, we expect that variables must be uh, independent uh, observations. We expect that there aren't any relationship between the subjects and uh, the variables are not paired. Also, we expect a large sample size, at least one frequency for each cell and at least five for the majority, 80% of the cells. So now let's go to another hypothetical problem, a hypothetical research problem. Um, and this problem is a, a made-up problem, a made for me, just for educational purposes. Uh, and this problem is just to illustrate how we can apply the, the key square in SPSS. So, women tend to report higher levels of symptomatology than men. However, this association needs to be explored. It's just a made-up problem. 
So, gender is associated differentially with symptomatology. So, we have two levels from each variable, gender male-female and symptomatology strong-weak. Okay? Uh, so, uh, our null hypothesis uh, is just that we don't have any association and uh, our H1 hypothesis is that uh, we find some association between variables. Uh, let's go to the SPSS to see how to perform this analysis. So, we are here in our SPSS environment and now we will look to our variables. Let's perform now the key square test. So, we go to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, Cross tabs, then we click here. And then we have our variable, which is the gender, and the other variable, which is symptoms. Okay. Now let's look to our menus here. Okay. We, we leave this right there. Okay. We will select key square. Okay. This is very important. It's here. We select the, um, the statistical test. Cells, we go here, we also have a standard option which is observed, but we, we will select also expected. Okay. Ascending, it's standardized. Okay, so let's go. What we have here? So, here we will see our p value which uh, is below uh, 0 0.01 or 0 0.05, okay? Which means that our um, key square is uh, statistical significant, okay? Here we have the values, okay? But here we have our statistical significant, uh, significance. Therefore, we may think that there is an association between the gender, male and female, uh, with symptomatology, right there, right there, okay? And that's it. Okay, it's all for today. Don't forget to see the video's description uh, regarding today's theme to see the manuals that I spoke to you in the beginning of this video. And also, if you like to leave a comment or a suggestion, uh, please um, say something in the comment sections below. And also, if you find useful what you saw here, please consider to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. Welcome to Mind Brain Talks, and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye!